All right, I think I think we're good to go. Can you guys hear me? So this is what I'm worried about. I have this mic plugged into my camera, and then I have an HDMI cable plugged into my computer, and then I have headphones plugged into my camera. But uh, I don't I don't know. It this mic is super quiet, so I have to like boost it a lot in um, post. So let me know if you can hear me or if it's too loud or whatever, because I have no idea what I'm doing. Yo, what's up, Skylar? Skylar, the question is if you can hear me or not, because I have no idea if this is actually working. <laughs> oh. Does it sound good? Do I need to talk quieter or louder? Whatever. All right, cool. This setup looks amazing. I'm super excited for it. Um, the lives are like going to be dope now and I'm going to do a lot more. I just had to, bro, last week I went to Best Buy right when they opened at 10 so I could come back in time. Um, I had to buy a solid state drive so that I could, I could film the lives on the camera um, because it needed to have more storage. Then this morning I went, I got a cam link so that I could plug it into my computer and, and do all this stuff. And the last two times I've been... Uh, Oh my God, I've just been running around crazy the hour before this live. It's stressing me out. My armpits are probably sweaty. Um, anyway, I got it all set up. It looks good. I'm stoked. Um, okay, cool. Like, Sean, this is perfect. All right, hold on, hold on. Before I jump ahead, um, guys, I, got, I was going to mention the podcast deal uh, thing I've been working on. Sean makes a good point. So, um, okay, hold on, hold on. Let's see, we got Skylar here, we got Aiden, we got Jared, what's up guys? Mizaki, Prithvi, Amir, Amir, you're pretty new, aren't you? I don't I don't know if I've seen your name here before. Welcome, welcome, uh, Sean, and then Dan the Man, and Aiden. All right, so far we got a, a solid group. Sophie Kennedy, I'm not sure, Sophie Kennedy, where you're from. You might have been here before, but. Um, okay, cool. So the first thing that I was going to talk about is the podcast. So I have the mic set up and I, I thought about a structure for it. Ideally, I'll be interviewing people. And so it won't seem like, okay, today we're going to be talking about BMX drama. It'll just be like, okay, Brad Sims, like, tell me what's going on with this, this, and this. That's the goal. It's going to be super fun. Um, but for now, I'm just going through uh, that, that first podcast idea was a little test attempt that I did. So I'm gonna send you guys the link so you can check it out and tell me what you think about it. And if everything turned Don made a good point already. And he said, I'm not sure if the repetitive background music is gonna work. And uh, I, it sounds way better, is, um, it sounds way better with the music than it did without, but, that was just like from the podcasting studio that I'm using. I just dropped it in. So I'm sure I could find something better. And I know it was a, it was too loud in the podcast and I couldn't turn it down. So Sean, that's a good point. I'm going to have to find something that's a little bit uh, better to do, but still kind of fills in my voice with the podcast. But I also filmed the podcast this style. So it's more like a YouTube video with podcast mp3 exported and that way i can just kind of multi-distribute everything that i've got going on the youtube version is uploading right now so later today i'll uh i mean it's uploaded it's just processing but later today i'll pop that in so you guys can watch the video version and then i think what i'll do is probably once a week or maybe bi-weekly i'll film a podcast and just talk about things that are going on um, but yeah, guys, click that link I just put in the chat, go check that out and uh, listen to it. Let me know what you think about it. Um, basically, what I want right now is more feedback. I want to know how I can make it better and more enjoyable for you. So I mean, you won't hurt my feelings. I'm asking for it. 
Sean gave me really good advice. So if you guys have any more input like that, like I'm glad to hear it. I put that it's the second best BMX podcast because nothing's going to be unclicked by Dennis Anderson. And I'm okay with that. I'm not trying to be the best, but Dennis has a great podcast and uh, I'm, I'm okay with the second best, you know? So yeah, let's see. We got lots of people in the chat. I'm, I'm trying too hard to make sure I'm talking in this mic and it's hurting my chest. <laughs> All right, Aiden says that his tires weigh twice as much as normal tires. Aiden, I am uh, not sure what you mean. Did you get new tires or what? I told you to get Momentums. Did you listen or no? You should have got Momentums, Aiden. You should have got Momentums. Um, Sean says, the fact that you are being open about covering drama is sort of a positive. Yeah, I my thought on that is that I don't think it really happens too often, but there's always little things that it's kind of fun to hear about. So like the, the Mark Webb, Daniel Sandoval thing that I talked about in the little podcast experiment was something that like people kind of talked about a lot. People who followed Daniel and knew what was going on. People who followed Mark and we're really into that as a BMX community. So talking about it as it comes up, I think will be a lot of fun. Um, and then it'll be cool to get different writers intake on it right so imagine asking someone who's friends with daniel sandoval what he thought about the situation versus someone who's friends with mark webb ryan reed says can you tell me about the division for t's 2021 please i i have no idea what that is let's look it up um, the next stream will be with OBS so that I can switch and you guys can see my searching. Um, but I just couldn't get that set up in time. So the next stream, we will do it that way. Um, yeah, yeah. And then then it'll be a lot more interactive because uh, I feel bad when I'm looking at my screen, you guys are just staring at me. Or when I'm drinking, like I could, I could play, play a video when I drink uh, water or whatever. So who asked this question? Oh, I got it. Ryan, Ryan. Okay, Ryan. Um, okay, Ryan. The division for T's. I have no idea where this is. It says, uh, it doesn't say. Backbone. Oh, it's Australian. Okay, okay. So Australian is, Colony is Australian. Colony is a really good brand. So this is probably a good brand. I don't know. I've never heard of it. Um, but it's full Kamali, fully sealed bearings, double wall rims, 21 inch top tube. So Ryan, I'd say this is very simple cult devotion. Um, it's got a little bit shorter of a chain stay than the, than the devotion. But other than that, they're pretty similar. It doesn't have great aftermarket parts. I mean, it doesn't really have any aftermarket parts at all. So it's just like, how, how do I put it? So they, they made a high quality bike with the full Kermali, the double wall rims and everything like that. But it's not a complete parts package. So think about like the We The People, uh, any We The People bike, they have different levels of quality, but most of their bikes are going to come with salt or eclat aftermarket parts. And while salt isn't the best, it's a pretty good add-on. Um, it's better than the stock parts. So like this bike comes with the Welgo pedals and pedals are pretty cheap and easy to replace, but that those are terrible pedals. Um, overall, like the, the foundation of the bike is great, but you're going to be upgrading your parts uh, more often than you'd expect to. And it says like seven, 649, is that 649 US dollars or is that 649 Australian? If it's 649 Australian, what does that correlate to in US dollars? I feel like your money's worth more than our money. Um, and if that's the case, if this is 649 US, I would not get it. Um, you could get something cheaper with much better quality for sure. But if for some reason that's 649 Australian, which is like 450 or 500 US, maybe even 550 US, it's it's worth it. It's not a great deal, but it's like, it's fair. Does that make sense? I hope that makes sense. Prithvi went snowboarding this weekend. Dude, that's sick. I have two snowboards in my garage, but it did snow 
but there's nowhere to go snowboarding. I mean, the closest place is like three hours away. And I really, you'd have to get a hotel room. It's like a hundred dollars a day to snowboard. And it's so fun. I really miss it. I haven't been in years. Um, dude, good job. Um, you should, I would love to duplicate what I'm doing with Dugster Bob as a snowboarding type brand. That would be really fun to get into. If I ever move somewhere like, like uh, Antarctica or anywhere that it's super cold, I would definitely start doing that um, instead of BMX. So Never Ender, what's up, Never Ender? Did you ever come ride bikes with us? I met three different guys at Diana last Saturday and uh, they were really cool. They, they'd just uh, kind of gotten into it and they knew who I was, but I had no idea who they were. And that's always kind of a creepy feeling. Um, I hate it. Word. But how are you going to start like with us or pros? Oh, Skylar, good question. Hold on. This is like $20 off Amazon and it's kind of a hunk of junk, but it gets the job done. Um, okay, Skylar. So I have. There, there's two different things that I'm thinking about, Skylar, is uh, the first thing, one, I know a few, not pro pros, but somewhat pro pros, and I have connections, so I, it wouldn't be hard for me to get somebody um, to agree to do something. The, the big deal is that it would be a call, and I don't know if it, it's, it'd be a lot of headache to get it like a, a call version set up and edit it and everything. I'd love to have, just get a second mic, get a second kit and have somewhere that we could pop up and meet. So like if I was ever back in LA or San Diego or Houston or whatever, I'm not Houston right now, that's for sure. Um, in that area, be like, hey man, do you wanna come on my podcast, blah, blah, blah. But I think I need to establish it a little bit more. So I'd start with lower, like not super huge people, obviously. Um, but yeah, no, I have, uh, one thing I want to do with it is get older people on who still ride and just talk about their experience as a sport evolved, but also get their take on things because they have a really interesting take on everything that's going on because they've seen it change over the years. So that'll be really fun to do. Um, but what I was getting at is on Anchor, I don't know how to do it. So look out for it on the website. If you're signed up on the email list, if you get emails from me. And uh, here on the YouTube, I'll put a link, but there's a way for you guys to send voice like recordings. And when I'm editing the podcast, I can put your voice recordings in here. I'm looking at it right now. Um, messages. So add listener voice messages. I share a voice message link. Oh, look, I just copied it. Look, I'll put it in the chat. Um, but you guys, I guess, go there. I, I'm, I'm honestly not sure, but go to that link. And then you could send me a voice message of like whatever you wanted to talk about. And I could do a podcast based off that. So like if the question of the day is, uh, you know, you could send me your three random words there. You could ask me like, what do I think about uh, this guy? And I'll look at this writer and be like, this guy's dope. Like talk about it a little bit, whatever. I don't know. Possibilities are endless. But you guys could send those voice messages and then I could pop them over into the podcast and and run it that way. So that'll be a super fun way for me to interact with you all and get the podcast really growing. Um, because I know, like we talked about doing a Zoom together where we all, like it was a live stream, but with a Zoom and you guys could ask your questions that way. This might be the best way to transition into the answering your questions as a podcast version. Because the thing is that you could listen to this while you're on your way to school, on your way to work, whatever and get so much value out of it. If I was just starting out and I was able to just plug in my headphones and listen to like a guy to answer questions about BMX, that would help me out a lot. So going that route with it is something I'll probably work on in the next couple of weeks to get it really set up. Um, but that'll be so much fun and you guys can be a part of the podcast with me and uh, everything like that. So I see Eddie in the chat. Eddie, what's up, Eddie? Um, Eddie says he does a podcast. I met Eddie a long, long, long time ago in Montana. Um, and I have no idea what he's up to. I saw him hanging out with Robbie Morales of Colt a while ago and Dustin from Woo Woodward. Um, and then Eddie and I are going to pop on and do a podcast eventually, but Eddie, I have to finish. Like there's a project I'm working on. We're going to, I'm going back to California in 
three weeks and then we should be wrapping it up uh, the following month. But then after that, I am going to have a lot more free time. So, so yeah, yeah, let's see. Guys, there's so many comments. You guys are dope. Yo, I posted a reel on Instagram. Did you guys see it? It was like a bar hump. Um, that thing's blowing up. It has like 2,500 likes. It's a bar hump at Northeast Skate Park in El Paso, 2,700. It's, I want to post another video, but I don't want to mess up the Instagram algorithm, so I'm not going to post anything. Skylar, are you, what are you not a fan of? I, I see Skylar said, I'm not a fan, but to each his own. Um, are you, hold on, I'm trying to pin it. Um, are you talking about not a fan of the podcast or about uh, the, what's that bike? The bike Ryan was asking about the division. Let me know, Skylar. Now I'm worried. Um, Lucas, what's up, Lucas? Glad you're here. Um, Lucas posts some really good videos. Uh, I really like I subscribe to a lot of these guys on here. If you want me to subscribe to you, post your channel link in the chat and I'll pop over there and subscribe because I love being able to interact with you guys. It's so much fun to watch you. Like say right now I go watch a video of yours and then a month later I see another video come up and you've learned certain tricks or whatever. That's so cool to me and I love to see it. Like I get so hyped watching people um, progress. Tubalito, Sean, are you asking about Tubalitos? I think Tubalitos are a ripoff. Not really a ripoff. They're just very, very, very expensive. And if you're not going to, like, it saves you rotational weight, which is, is pretty important. Um, but for that price, it's to me, it's just not worth it. Now, if you have a ton of money and you're building up a new bike and you're going to drop three grand on a new bike, go ahead, get Tubalitos, get all tie. I burped, get all tied, get everything that you need to make the craziest bike you can imagine. But if you're like just riding and you're going to throw on two Bolitos, it's not going to make a world of difference unless you go two Bolitos, um, tie wheel sets and like light, light tires. That's going to be a ton of rotational weight that you're shaving off and you will really notice that. Rado, what's up, Rado? Rado says, oh, hold on, hold on. I got to answer Eddie's question. Do I miss Baker Montana Skate Park, um, Eddie? I definitely do, just a little bit. Um, I was thinking about it a couple of days ago, and when it's not cold, I really want to go back up there. One to ride a little bit, but two, when I lived in Montana, there was bar food, so like the only restaurants we had were bars, and some of that like fried uh, cauliflower. That that's so good. I can't find it anywhere here. So there's a bunch of random food that I want to get when I go back up there. So I will, uh, I miss the skate park and the bar food for sure. All right, Rado. Rado says, any help to do a 180? I don't know how to get the control of the bike to spin it. Really different to scooter. I do scoot mistakes. Please help. Okay. Um, so I saw, who was it? Who was it? Skylar popped in and said, turn your head. It will help a lot. Um, and and that, that's a really good point. The best thing, I don't have one on my phone. Uh, the, the best thing I could do for you, Rado, is just walk you through it. Um, when you're rolling, you need to find like a line that you're going to 180 at. So roll at your line and, and about a foot, oh, foot that way, about a foot before you get to your line, you're going to start to turn your wheel just a little bit the way that you want to 180. So what that does is that starts you carving and kind of initiates the spin. So turn that wheel just a little bit and compress your body. What I mean by that is bend your knees, get your chest lower so that you're kind of in a ball. Because when your wheel turns and hits that line, all your body is, is exploding up. And that's how you get that hop motion. So your chest is going straight up, your knees are expanding, your arms are gonna straighten out and pull up the front wheel. You're going to keep that spin that you had when you were carving, and then you're going to turn your head. I can't turn my head without like making the mic not work, but you're going to turn your head and look wherever you're trying to land. So like I noticed when I was doing a hop 360, I recorded it in really slow motion so I could break it down. And my, my body was like this, but my head was literally looking behind me. 
And that's how it should be with the 180 because that's twisting your body. Your body's going to follow your head and start that rotation. You're going to suck your knees up to make sure you get the spin all the way around. And uh, then you just land. I know it makes that sound really easy. It's a lot more complicated, I promise. But the best thing you can do, man, is one, get really good at bunny hops. Practice those a lot. Get better at it. And make sure you follow those steps that I just outlined. I think you will land it pretty quickly. Prithvi says, what states do you guys live in? He's in Virginia. Prithvi, I've been to Virginia once. It was um, interesting. There wasn't anything crazy there. It's kind of a weird state, to be honest. Um, I'm in New Mexico. Never Ender is in Texas. And yeah, good question, I guess. Good question. Aiden has Swathre... But, Aiden, I don't even know what kind of tires those are. Eddie says, We the People Bikes is a good company. Is that a question, Eddie, or is that like facts? Eddie, have you been riding the Honey Hole? I see a lot of, uh, um, God, who is it? Those guys riding the Honey Hole. I can't even remember their names. The guys that came up to Baker with you. That is uh, That park looks kind of fun. I'm sad I never got to go there. Amir says, any frame recommendations with a short chain stay, like under 13? I also ride with a gyro, currently looking at Kink Help and We the People Envy XLT, but I like a few options. Um, I'm pretty sure the Sunday Park Ranger would be a really good choice for you, but let me double check the chain stay length because I can't remember it off the top of my head. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Yeah, so the Park Ranger, here, I'm going to send the link. Um, I, I don't, my friend got that frame, and it's it's a super good frame. The chain stays 12.7 to 13, so slammed is going to be 12.7. All the way out is 13. Right in the middle is right in, in between that, what, 12.8. Um, so got a steeper head tube angle. And yeah, it comes in 20.5, 20.75, and 21 inch. I think that'd be a good choice for you because you said you ride park, right? Here, Amir, I just posted that. It's going to be at the very bottom of the chat. Um, guys, I'm probably way behind. You guys are popping off. This is a lot of fun. So if I don't answer your question right away, eventually I will get to it. Um, hopefully I get to it before the live ends. If not, um, I'm sorry. Next time. <laughs> Hmm. Mizaki says, do you know the difference between BMX and mountain bike brake pads? Is there any difference performance? I'm honestly, I don't know. I'm going to assume that there isn't really a difference unless you're talking about like disc brake pads. Um, but the ones that grab the wheels are going to be the same as far as I know. I, I don't see why they'd be different, but I don't know. I don't know anything about mountain bikes, to be honest. My man, Blake, just bought a new sprocket, but then the inner tube popped today. Um, guys, if you weren't on the live, I think two lives ago, Blake was telling us that he had his bike was broken. His sprocket was doing weird things. We talked about how he could fix it. And and uh, ultimately, he super glued it onto the the ring that, that holds it in place. So he super glued it and said it was working good. And now his tube, oh, Blake. That's rough, man. That's rough. The uh, the BMX gods are not in your favor. Eddie says, what do you think about mafia bikes? Lucas says, they suck. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I don't know, man. It's interesting because I just talked about that one in the bikes that don't suck. Um, one of the mafia bikes was, I'd say, better than the fit. As a brand, though, I don't like it because they don't do anything for the sport. So, wow, I'm way here at the bottom, way at the bottom. Um, oh, yo, I just saw somebody talk about foot plant. I know we talked about that a while ago. Did any of you guys actually end up landing a foot plant?
Um, real quick, we're at 13 likes. I hate that number. Can we uh, just one person change it? Thank you. Yeah, 14. I appreciate you. Okay, Skylar said something. Um, you could make a Discord group. I know we talked about that with, I think Bizzle was going to do that. Um, God, I can't remember. But yeah, we, we talked about making one. I don't have the time and I don't know anything about Discord to do it. But if any of you guys are Discord wizards and want to throw a group together, we can, uh, I will support that and do stuff with it for sure. Sean stopped writing in, in 1979. See, Sean, I'd love to like interview you about what you've seen change over that. Um, yeah, no, that's awesome. Those, those older guys have so much wisdom and like good, good stories because BMX back in the day than it was now. They're like pioneering the industry. Codename 12Y Beat says hi, 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 hi. Um, hi, 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 hi. Good, good to talk to you, man. Thanks for being in the live, I guess. Don't don't spam the chat though, because uh all these guys with wrenches will will give you the hammer if you spam the chat. Um Prithvi also says I should make a Discord. Prithvi, uh make me a Discord, man. I will use it, I think. Um, experimenting with Angel says, are you in El Paso right now? I am not. I'm in Las Cruces. Uh, I will be in El Paso tomorrow. I'm 99% sure. If the, the weather is good, actually. We had snow earlier last week, and now the snow is gone, and it's nice and sunny. So usually I go up to El Paso and ride on Saturdays, and that's like the only day I get to ride. Um, I'm just too busy right now, man. I go to bed at like 8 or 9, and I wake up. Yesterday I woke up at 3 30 and i i don't know just start typing away you know it's it's fun you know if i didn't love what i do there's no way i'd put in this much time so anyway i only get to ride once a week experimenting with angel are you the angel from yo tony is the one that made my likes go up hey tony what's up um guys tony i don't see him in the chat otherwise i'd plug his youtube if he had one Tony was one of my campers at Woodward, I think, in my cabin. Uh, kid, he was pretty good. He was pretty good. Like, you know, okay. But now he's killing it. He's gotten so much better. It's crazy. I'd love to see the progression. Houston got his space base, space brace delivered, and these things are no joke. They work wonderful. Yeah, space brace has the craziest reputation for making their uh they just they just make good stuff that really actually protects your ankles they're just so expensive in my opinion i don't know i'm gonna make better space braces one day so uh be on the lookout just kidding i don't have time for that i want one space brace for my right ankle because that's the one i always mick twisty on um Dustin Hoffman. What's up, Dustin? Dustin says, how is everybody's Friday going? And that's a good question, guys. If you right now type it in, if your Friday's going A, excellent, or B, sad. It's only two options, A or B. Um, but that is a good question. Mine's going excellent now. Like I said at the beginning of it, I was running around for like an hour. I had to go. So this is my, my morning. I woke up, worked on an email recommendations for like three hours went to the gym left the gym went to sports clips got my hair cut i'm pretty sure the girl had covid she she like came up her eyes are all like this she's like you ready and i'm like no nope. um but yeah i guess so then she's cutting my hair and i could hear her breathing and i'm like like the whole time that was the most uncomfortable haircut i've ever had and uh, she's like, do you want me to wash your hair? I'm like, no, like, just get me out of here. <laughs> um, so so we'll see in two weeks how I'm doing. Um, that, that was crazy, though. I was, I was not having a good time. So then I ran to Best Buy because they open up at 10 for their curbside to pick up the cam link for this. And then I went to Walmart real quick. I got a sandwich and I ate the sandwich while I drove home, got this set up and then got ready. 
So uh, that was stressful, especially the haircut part. But now it's it's good. Excellent. Now my morning is excellent. Aiden says, how do you foot plant? It's so hard. Why? Aiden, I'm going to, guys, uh, this guy used to be like my best friend. We're not friends anymore. But he does do really excellent foot plants. I don't know if you guys can even see this. Here, oh, it's not even in focus. But here, I'm going to watch a couple of these because his name's Michael Jimenez. Um, really, dude, craziest foot plants, man. Craziest. It's like all he does, but it's they are very good on, on anything, too. It's super funny. So uh, it, his Instagram's Comet Donkey, if you guys want to follow him for the foot plants. Because, look, this one's this one's wild. Can you see it? He like folded his bike like a turn down with the foot plant. It's really crazy. Um, comment donkey, foot plant expert right there. So uh, <laughs> yeah, check that out. Um, Houston says, looks like Florida Swamp Fest isn't going down in April. Postponed again. There's a ton of skating events though. Um, when Swamp Fest first came out, I was never excited about it. Like that was never something I wanted to do. But after actually genuinely watching a few videos, I was like, this, this actually looks fun. And then the year that I wanted to go was last year when they canceled it. So uh, wouldn't, yeah, doesn't surprise me that it's canceled again. Very depressing. But uh, yo, guys, how cool would that be? Like whenever they do it, um, we all go out there, like the whole Dugster Bob squad. <laughs> That'd be so fun. It'd be cool to with everyone and get to ride. Um, David Lopez just got a Huffy Comp race bike for 125 from Walmart online. What's up, David? Welcome to BMX. I've never done a review on the Huffy Comp line. Um, but I mean, hey, man, I whatever gets you into the sport. That's my biggest thing is that so what happens is this is how it happened for me. I saw somebody doing BMX tricks and I was like, this is crazy. I want to do that. So I went to Walmart and I told my parents I wanted a BMX bike. So they got me a Tony Hawk. Uh, it's like Tony Hawk's a skater, but they, they have a Tony Hawk BMX bike. How that makes sense. Anyway, I got a Tony Hawk BMX bike. Uh, when I was 13, I rode my handlebars way Chicago style and I tried to learn bunny hops. And anyway, that was my first bike and it got me into the sport because from there the following birthday i had i got a dk bike and then my next one was like an eastern and then a black eye and and uh, it progressed from there so as long as you get on a bike and get into it dude you're set so congrats welcome to bmx um blake ryan wagner blake says his middle name houston you're in glendale huh yo i'm a. Uh, I stay with a friend in Peoria when I go through there and I'm coming through in a, um, like I said, in a few weeks. So we should ride bikes. That would be dope. I'll, uh, I'll talk about it in the live more when I am in the area and then we can, uh, David, you just said you got the, <sighs> what? So David said, oh, David said California too. He got the Huffy comp race bike, but then he's got the, we, the people arcade, um okay one's for racing maybe i don't know okay anyway anyway lucas says who has a fidget spinner in the house um shouts out to jeff i have my little my little bikes it's so funny sometimes i'll just be sitting here and i'll, I'll do nose manuals and uh that's a lot of fun i've never had a fidget spinner but i wanted to play it play with it for like five seconds and then uh yeah i never got one so so this is interesting here. Let's see. Man. All right. Denzel Scott says, man, I'm eating every live. I need to be a moderator. Um, okay, I guess. But here's, I think I'm going to have to change my moderator structure. And what I'm going to start doing, not yet, not yet. So you guys are all moderators. We'll figure this out later. But what I'm going to do is at the end of the live, everyone loses it everyone loses it but there's a contest right before the live like the first 10 people to get on and type in the chat 
um, when I start or something like that, we'll get a moderator for the rest of the live. That way we can mix it up a little more and get some new people uh, as moderators. And it'll be kind of fun to see who is on time, not Aiden, and who is uh, slacking Aiden. Just kidding. You guys have school. Like, I get it. I get it. You guys have to do school. Pay attention to homework. Um, so Blake says, I have an unreleased frame from Sunday. And uh, that's very interesting. Oh, wait, wait, wait. I'm going to skip it. Go go to Rado's question. Rado says, I turned my head. I landed the 180 like two times, but I don't know how. But I always do 90. But if I do 180, the tires pop off to the other side. Um, Rado, it sounds like the biggest thing you're not doing is sucking your knees up. So when you suck your knees up, it levels out your bike and it gives you a little more time. Look, look, look. All right, bike. Okay, you're going to hop. If you 180 like this, your back wheel is a lot lower than your front wheel. And um, so then when you land, all that pressure is like this. But when you hop, if you suck your knees up, it's a more level 180 and then it lands more level. And you usually get the full rotation too. So try that. Um, anyway, Blake, that is interesting about the frame. You should spill the tea. Tell us all about it. Um, I love BMX. What's up, man? I love BMX was the second to last person to get a new wrench. He tried his first 180 yesterday, landed 110, but I learned how to do double tire rides and jump four foot gaps. That's dope. Um, I hope, I think I subbed to you on YouTube. I hope you post some stuff on YouTube so I can check it out and watch the progression. That is, uh, really awesome, man. I just got skipped all the way to the bottom. Hold on. Hold on. Uh, I see Aaron Laird in here. What's up, man? Um, Houston answered the brake pad question. Mountain bike with rotors, different brake pads. Road bike with pads, closer fit to BMX. Boom, good good answer. Um, okay, Blake said the person that he bought it from is sponsored by Sunday, and it was his first sponsored bike. It's lighter version of the Sunday Soundwave frame. Um, okay, okay. I mean, it wouldn't surprise me. They make a lot of pros for just testing, and so so yeah, that wouldn't uh, wouldn't surprise me. I don't know about all that though. Okay, Eddie, David, John, and Mullet. Yeah, David and John, I remember them. Mullet's the guy at the ramp club, I think, and I never met him. Aiden kind of landed a foot plan pretty bad. Um, that's good, but you got to do a little better. I'm just trying to find some some good questions to talk about, so hold on. Oh, Blake said, you guys should check out my new edit for me. Um, I think he plugged his Instagram. I follow Blake on Instagram and uh, he posts some pretty good scooter stuff. I haven't seen too much on the BMX. I haven't seen anything on BMX, actually. Experimenting with Angel says, that's a bummer. I wanted to ride with you one day. You seem super chill. Angel, tomorrow I will be in El Paso. Usually we go to like Diana or Northeast, but we might go to Carolina tomorrow. I'm not sure. I kind of, I don't know. I don't know if I'm allowed to ride up there right now. <laughs> yeah, Aiden, I was getting, I did get a haircut. I was getting really shaggy. Um, I, I start to wear a hat all the time when my hair gets long because it gets really poofy. So uh, you got a haircut and you cut it way too short. That's my biggest fear. Um, at least, at least the guy didn't give you COVID though. He had the most shaky hands. <laughs> Eddie, I'm glad that you're enjoying the live. I'm having so much fun doing it. Um, yeah, dude. Uh, glad you're here. We'll have to do that podcast soon, soon. I promise, but I've just got to clear up a few things first. I've got way too much going on. Uh, Lucas says, what do you think of the rant? n60 bars so i'm gonna look it up just to look at the specs rant overall is a decent brand um things like 
it's kind of risky because rant is more of a lower end um lower end uh company however they still put in um quality materials into their their parts so it's not going to be even anything close to odyssey but hence the price difference um like odyssey what the the ramp bars are 37 and some good like odyssey bars are 69 or so so they're double the price and that the quality really is going to you're it's going to be different if you are really abusing the bike and you're just like you know doing sean burns type stuff you you probably don't want to go with these and get you want to get something a little bit stronger if you just ride your one you're really clean with your riding or two you're you're i'd say mid-level these are going to be just fine because they are good quality material but it's not the same level of craftsmanship uh that goes into like the odyssey bars does that make sense or more expensive bars in general so for the price, you really cannot go wrong. They just won't last as long as the $70 bars. Good question. Good question. Jeff, what's up, Jeff? Glad you are back in the live. It's so cool to see how many of you guys come back to these lives. This is dope. Uh, Neverender says, Doug, best flat resistant tubes. Man, a month in and I've had a few flats already. I take it to the park, but around my hood, I keep getting them. Um, this is what we do. We just, one, I almost never would run flat resistant tubes until I get a flat and then I put slime in it. So the you can buy a tube of slime for like eight or nine dollars and that'll last you a lot of tubes. Put like just a couple squirts in. That's all you need. You don't need to use half the bottle. Put a couple squirts in enough to like, enough to where you feel like it would comfortably cover the uh the outside of the tube when you spin it um so i buy normal tubes i put some slime in there I spin it and it seals up the thing is double check because here's the thing slime only pin or only fixes punctures on the outside of the tire if you're getting pinch flats or if you have a spoke poking through your rim causing it a flat so we take out the tube See if the hole's on the outside of the tube or if it's on the inside. If it's on the inside, there's something wrong with your wheel that's causing that and nothing's going to fix that. If it's on the outside, one, actually crazy story, one, I would just try to run slime because the more like crazy you get about flat resistance, um, the heavier your bike's going to get. So just go with some slime when you need it. But this guy, Jesse, that rides in El Paso, he's a Carolina Homie gets gorilla tape, like gorilla duct tape, and just tapes it around a whole roll. He uses a whole roll of tape, the, a whole roll, tapes it around his tire, okay? The whole tire. <laughs> and he's like, well, I don't get flats anymore. I'm like, dude, your bike weighs like 45 pounds. What are you talking about? Um, but if you're really concerned about flats, that's an option because it literally like He's got this much extra thickness in his, I mean, probably more than that, honestly, I don't know, uh, on the inside of his tire. So in between the tire and the tube, uh, keeping him from getting flats. It's absolutely crazy to me, but um, <laughs> uh, all right. Experimenting with Angel says, are foot plants the same as fast plants? You're the first to say foot plant, just wondering. Um, yeah, in my opinion, I mean, no, they're not technically the same, but the way I use it, they are like, I don't know. It's, it's like if your foot plants, it's a foot plant. If it's faster, I guess it's a fast plant. Just, just call it whatever you want. That's how, that's how I'd go. Um, generally though, like when I think of a fast plant, it's for example, I'm going over a bank to bank and I'm going really fast. And when I'm coming up, I slap my foot down on the bank part and pop all the way over the rest of the jump. Whereas a foot plant could be considered like you jump out of a quarter and you foot plant on a wall, go back in, like things like that. But I mean, maybe I'm using it wrong, but I think it's just kind of like a term you can use pretty loosely. Rado had to go. See you later, Rado. Thank you for hanging out for about 30 minutes on the live. Haro Gang says, hey, I was planning on getting S&M four piece bars. My friend has them, but I don't know how good they are. Can you tell me? Sure. I'm going to look just S and M four piece bars. Like what's the, what's the model? 
Um, I'm gonna drink some water real quick. But what I can tell you is that there's a bunch of different options, uh, and S and M is one of the best brands you can get aftermarket bars or aftermarket parts in general from. So they don't make complete bikes. They only make aftermarket parts. And 90% of it is American made, like hand welded. It's the, see, that's that craftsmanship aspect that I was talking about earlier. These are like, look at these uh, FU bars are $85, but they have to pay somebody to weld those. They have to get the materials here. So like the quality of the craftsmanship is definitely next level. Um, those are the only four piece bars I see. So they're the the FU bars, depending on the rise you get. Yeah, they're, I mean, they're SM. So, yes, the answer is yes on anything SM and Odyssey. 10 out of 10 would recommend. Look, I started out with a full gallon. We're at about half a gallon so far. So, we're doing pretty good. Pretty good. Um, I see on here the Hoder bars. I used to have the Hoder bars, but I hated them. And I hated them because they were so wide that it was easy to control, but I couldn't hardly bar spin. So you got to think about all those different specs when you're buying bars, Haro Gang. Um, I didn't pin your comment. I'm sorry. You got to think about all those different specs because you don't want to buy bars and then like degress. When you buy a new part, you want to progress. So Google bar specs and learn a little bit more about it. Um, I'm sure I should come up, but do that before you buy bars because it's really important. Like the rise, the upsweep, everything is is super important with how it's going to affect your riding. Skyler says that you should come up to Portland, Oregon. It's crazy up here. Do you mean crazy like uh, the riding's crazy or like? you got crazy stuff going on up there. I don't know if I want to go up for nonsense. Um, I, I'd go up for crazy riding. I've seen, what is that? The, the railroad? No, what's it called? There's an indoor park there, right? It has something to do with like railroads. I can't think of it. <laughs> oh my God, I wish I could remember. Yeah, oh well, it's gone. It's gone. Anyway. I've seen, I have a couple friends up in that area. One of them's snowboarding right now. His name is DJ. Uh, dang, I miss DJ. I need to go up that way for sure. Good, good idea, Skylar. Good idea. Sophie Kennedy says, hi. Hello, Sophie Kennedy. What is up? Um, what else do we have here? Oh my God, there's so many things just popped down. We're at 48 minutes. I feel like I have to, to go to work for a couple hours at one so pretty right when right around an hour on this live i'm gonna have to pop off so get your questions in right now because you know in, in about five seven minutes i'll i'll try and rapid answer them instead of just uh uh hold on one second okay um real quick guys don't delete other people's comments um i mean you can but i will uh i'll look at the deleted comment and if it was like uh something that shouldn't have been deleted you just won't be a moderator anymore because it's so annoying trying to babysit you guys most people are really good about it it's okay um but yeah don't don't delete other comments it makes it frustrating for me look now i lost my spot so hold on <laughs> Prithvi says, I can make a Discord if you want. Um, yeah, dude, that would be dope. I, I don't know anything about it. I used to play Ark a lot, and I was in a Discord for that, but I I, uh, I cannot remember anything about it. So, so yeah. Aiden's been watching Doug since under 300 subs. Dude, that's crazy because that was only maybe a, not even a year ago, six months ago, we really started the YouTube uh, journey and it's been amazing. We've been, we've grown a lot and uh, the quality stepped up, like everything. It's the next year from here on out is just going to be absolutely insane with 
everything I've got going on. And you guys are a part of it. You guys are a really early part of it too, I feel like. I feel like this is just the beginning. I mean, Aiden was at the true just beginning, but like, this is dope. You guys are awesome. You guys make it what it is. Like without your guys' questions, I wouldn't be in it. Like it'd be a boring live, you know? I always talk about this. The first one I did, I found questions. Like I kind of made up a couple questions and then I found some from different YouTube comments to just talk about them and pretend like people were asking me them. And uh, I only had to do it for part of the live. Enough people popped on, but that's crazy. That And now I don't even have to. And now I don't even get to answer all these questions because there's so many. Uh, I love it. I love everything that I'm doing. Kristen Porres says, what's up, Doug? Thoughts on the BSD Revolution Hub? Yeah, real quick. That is a great hub. My friend had it. He hated it. He sold it. But I wrote it a couple times and there was an issue that we'd have with it randomly engaging. So sometimes you would 180 and it would be unengaged, like you'd pedal forward and unpedal 180 and then it would engage and like buck you off. So that's okay if you're just doing flat 180s, like it's kind of annoying. But now imagine if you uh, go really fast, 180 down El Toro and that happens, you'll die. So uh depending on your riding level, like you, you need something really reliable. And for him, that was not a good choice because he needed reliability and that hub just didn't have it. I think that they, uh, over the next couple of years, that technology will keep evolving and we'll get a lot better quality revolutionary type hubs. And very soon I'm going to switch to one because I am getting bored of a cassette. I hate free coasters. So so yeah, that is a good, very good question. Kristen says, downtown El Paso ride. Um, yes, I like the downtown El Paso rides. We haven't been in a long time. Dino Storza says, hi, Doug. YouTube notified me that you answered my question. No idea how to search for it in the chat or video. Um, oh, yeah, I have no idea, man. I, If it was like a... Like, did I type it in to reply to you? Did did I answer it in a different live? I have no idea. If it was in a live, you're, what you're going to have to do is watch the whole live to find it. Um, I have no idea, man. I am so sorry. Prithvi says, we have to get Doug to 10K on YouTube by the end of the year. You are correct. So my goal on my whiteboard, you guys can't see it now, but it's up here. That says 10,000 YouTube subs by September. So it's it's actually sooner, Prithvi. We have to get going on that. Um, hold on, I got to put that on my story. It's it's kind of funny. Okay, it's on my story. Um. All right. All right. All right. Sorry. Sorry, guys. I get I get so distracted. Black 187 187 says, Hey guys, sorry, I'm going to miss the stream. Oh my God. Never Ender got a slime tube, but was hesitant to try it. Um, I think you'll like it. You won't notice too much with the slime tube. It's, it's a little heavier, but it really, for stickers, it works the best. Um, <laughs> Houston says gorilla tape. That kid's a boss. He really is. He's, Jesse's crazy to watch ride because he just sends it. And I love watching people like that because there's no way I'd ever be like that. I'm too calculated and too scared to like just send something. And so watching people like that, I'm like, dude, you are next level. Never Ender says, Doug, I actually went to Diana last Saturday, but I was there around 8 a.m. was trying to take advantage of the sparse crowd. Um, oh, Carolina. Yeah, we got to, everyone got to Carolina at about, I got there at one last Saturday. Everyone else got there around 12. So you just missed out on the squad. It definitely gets really crazy over there though. Um, I get frustrated because that park is designed. I love dropping in at one end and ripping around the whole park and like just flowing everything. And when there's 25 people there, you, you literally cannot do that. And I hate just riding one obstacle. So I get frustrated. Um, yeah. XYZ Scorpio says, hey, Doug, 
I'm in the market for BMX. I love riding park and street. I'm a mid-level rider. And I'm so confused on if a short chain stay would be worth it because I really like ramp and quarter pipes. So this is the way when I recommend bikes, I go for park, really compressed geometry, short chain stay, steep head tube, uh, short standover. However, that's for responsive park riding. So there's flowy park riding, which I'd call it. And that's what a lot of the fly bikes are. The fly bikes are designed with longer chain stay, taller standover, and a more mellow head tube because those riders need to go really fast, really high, and have full control over their bike when they're way up in the air and just doing different things. So you need to figure out if you're more of a technical park rider, think about like Alex Colborn, Daniel Sandoval, Mark Webb, that type of riding. Or if you're more of a flowy park rider, like Gary Young, Chase Hawk, um, or just uh, Corey Walsh. So a rider like that is going to be a lot more, you want a longer chain stay. Does that make sense? But it, it's more so about the style. So it's the same thing for street riding. Gary Young rides a longer frame geometry because his street riding style is way different than Garrett Reynolds. Um, so yeah, think about that when you're looking for the frame and then go off of your style, like the style you want to get out of it. Jeff says, what are your thoughts on how to get BMX bigger as a sport? I feel it can get bigger than X Games and YouTube stuff. Jeff, this is, I, I feel like I want to end on this question because this is a really good question that I've, the re, so I started this as a blog, Dougster Bob is a blog to just kind of update my life as I progressed with BMX, blah, blah, blah. But nothing really came out of it. Um, I didn't upload stuff. I didn't know how to blog. So what I did, I was at Woodward uh, working with kids, helping them, them learn BMX and Jake, our, what was he, the action sports director would talk to us every week and say, look guys, years ago, we'd have triple the numbers that we have right now. We'd have so many more kids here learning BMX, riding BMX, and the sport is kind of declining. And he, he's right. It is kind of dying off more so I think for Woodward than, than BMX as a whole. But this was like, I, I thought, okay, well, what could we do to grow the sport, right? There's something that every one of us can do to make an impact. And his thing was give these kids the best experience that you can while they're here. So they tell their friends about it. They get their friends into the sport and, and everything like that. Um, so then what I started with this was just to make it more understandable. So for me, it was like five years of tri trial and error to get into BMX and to figure out everything. And then, so I thought, okay, by simplifying that and people into the sport, but that's, that's not, I think if we're talking like economy, right. To do is to figure out how to do two things, make the bikes way cheaper, half the price that they are. $500 bikes should cost 250, $200 bikes should cost 100, um, and still have the, the equivalent quality that they're at right now. Right. Because look at skateboarding. You can get a skateboard for $40. You can get a skateboard for $200. The quality varies there. But a $400 entry point into a sport is like a baseball bat, you know, things that you play normal sports with. Whereas BMX, it's like a, a $500 entry point for a decent bike. And that's a lot. That's a lot for a lot of people. Now, skate parks are accessible, but the bikes aren't accessible. So we have to figure out how we can mass produce, maybe get more bikes out there, how we can, all the brands could work together. What I don't know what it would be, but I think the price point's one of the biggest things. And then awareness, obviously, if we can uh, get more people aware of BMX. So Olympics is going to help that out. X Games helps that out. Stunt shows help that out, which are kind of dying off again. Uh, things like that, that people see the sport and they're like, oh, this I want to try it. And then they can actually afford the bike to get into it. I think that's what we need to do to uh, to grow the sport. That would be a lot of fun. Um, what else? I'm going to do one more here. 
All right. No, I, th- I guess I think that is it. I've got to go start getting ready for work. Um, let's see. Let's see. Yeah, no, I am going to get ready for work, guys. If uh, you guys have any more questions, leave them in a comment somewhere. Check out the podcast because I am uh, I want your feedback on it. That's what I want. Hold on, hold on. I'm going to post the link again. Don't leave yet. Hold on, hold on. I just posted one. This is kind of a test outline. Listen to it. Tell me what you think. The first person gave me really good feedback about the, um, the beat that plays in the background being annoying and fair enough that's good that's the kind of feedback i want so check that out give me some feedback on it because i'm going to start filming here in the next couple weeks constant updates and uh, making more podcasty stuff i'm going to upload the video version on youtube later today of the podcast so you can check that out and then uh yeah i guess that's it i don't know there's more i should talk about but i don't think i really have a whole lot if you live in el paso let's ride bikes tomorrow and uh if you don't i hope you get to ride bikes this weekend i hope you're not stranded without electricity in the cold have a good day bye